The Build Show today, we are visiting my buddy Luke Mesger's job site where he's got a house he's building for someone who's got some chemical sensitivities. And we're going to see how this house is being built foam free. It's something I hear more and more these days. There he is. Hey, Luke, what's up, dude? Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for having me on your job site. Absolutely, Matt. So if you don't know Luke, uh, Mesger Homes been a friend for many years. Great builder here in Austin, Texas. And Luke is building this house for someone, as I mentioned earlier, that has some chemical sensitivities. Mm -hmm. Why are we meeting on the outside if we're talking about a foam-free house? Great Nick? question, Matt. So it all starts on the outside. Um, if we want a foam-free house on mm -hmm. the inside, that means we have to do all of our air sealing on the outside. Ah, this is something I've like been it. doing for years. And uh, yeah, it not only can you put whatever type of insulation you want to on the inside, um, but yeah, it frees you up for many options. So, so what do we have here? here? So our mutual friend Doug Cameron uh -huh. was the first to market on this concept. He calls it uh, caulk and block. <laughs> I don't you like call that term. it Zip 2.0. I coined it Zip 2.0. Just sounds for, a little for... more official. Sorry, Doug. Yeah, sorry, um, Doug. But it makes total sense. Um, this is a this is a commercial detail that they've been doing for years, mm -hmm. and it's finally going in going into the residential market. Yeah. So this is zip uh, sheathing. If mm -hmm. you're not familiar, it's a an OSB uh, structural sheathing that has this green facer that's waterproof already. And then what is this uh, gray fluid? Yeah, so since our field is taken care of, we have to detail the seams. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Zips... Um, liquid flash. Liquid flash, right. Yep. So you can either tape it, mm -hmm. um, but there's some downsides to the tape. You have to really in rely on the installers to do it right. Yeah, you gotta pressure you gotta pressure it, right? You gotta roll well, it. Well clean, dry, immediately roll it. Yeah. Which is great. No wet, no wet. No dogging on it, but this yep. this is more foolproof. Yeah. It can yep. go on wet. And it's a little more expensive than tape, Correct. right? Correct. But it can go on wet, which is a huge benefit. It can go on wet. Benefit. It can go on dusty. Um, it's great. You I don't love have to the be quite as perfect. Correct. Correct. And then I'm seeing that you're doing that on your on your sheathing nail holes too. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, the other competitor has some fun videos of the nail heads leaking, so it only takes a little bit of time to just cover cover your bases in you that respect. That you though. don't have to do that, no, yeah. but it's a good idea. Now, what um, is this black stuff uh, tape that I'm seeing down there? Yeah, I, this is one of my favorite details. So you can also use the Zip Liquid Flash to connect your sheathing to your foundation, mm -hmm. but I have found that your slab's not always perfect, right? Yeah. It's going to be waving in and out. It's going to be dipping up and down, and so you can find yourself using a whole tube of caulk that's quite expensive yep, yep. and only go three linear feet. Ah, so it starts adding up really quick. So I discovered this tape, it's the Siga Fintram F tape. Okay. It's a, it's kind of a, a fleecy uh, surface And on that's there. important, I'll, I'll mention that later, but it's, it sticks to concrete mm -hmm. and they, they, their instructions say it does not need primer. Interesting, and so you didn't me, primer this. You, you are not getting that off and yep. we did not use primer. That's stuck, man, that's impressive. Yeah. And now why the fleece? What, what do you like about the fleece? So the fleece, in our, in our market, we do a lot of what's called underpinning. We'll come in uh, at near the end of the project kind of with like a, ste uh, a cheap stucco. It's just mm -hmm. a smear coat of mortar. Just to cover the foundation. Just to cover up. this. And this fleecy backing grips it. Ah, so if you were to use a slick tape that's here, cool, man. your underpinning might flake off of that. In but a this is going to kind of bond it's to It's going to bond to that fleece tape. So you can, cool. this comes in four, six, eight, 12 inch lengths. You can get it as, as long as you want. So if you, that, that fleece came way down here, not a problem. I've also seen these guys make it with dots in it. Correct. So that your concrete would come through and mm -hmm. you could also bond to your concrete yeah. surface. But to mention, the reason we do this, this is a very leaky detail right yep, here. Yep. Yeah, you can, this is just nice and airtight. Super airtight. But right down here, you don't know it, but there's tons of air that gets leaked through here. So if we can get that air barrier all the way down to the foundation. I found out the hard way on that one on, on a callback 10 years ago. Yeah. Where I, I thought for sure my my foam uh, underneath there, what do they the call it? Your seal. seal sealer, right? Right. Was going to do it. And, uh, and I had an air leakage callback on a house that was really embarrassing for me. And it was really hard to fix and very right. expensive to fix. So by doing this, so in other words, you're doing this air sealing on the outside, correct? So that we're not as reliant on foam on the inside. Yeah, and that's kind of a common fallacy people think a lot is that you know I'm gonna air I'm gonna spray foam my house. It's gonna be airtight. Like we've both seen photos of where that foam separates, yeah. especially going in between stud bays. You're yeah. not gonna you're not gonna get a lot of air sealing in stud bay foam insulation. And speaking of air sealing, now we're in the garage. This is a attached garage. We've got a house beyond us, and attached garages are not great for indoor air quality because we've got cars and we've got paint and gasoline and engines in here and 
carbon monoxide. But what Luke has done is number one, I don't see any, I don't see any equipment in here, right? There's no, there's no furnace in here. Right. Uh, there's nothing that's going to connect air from the garage. Mm -hmm. But check this detail out that Luke's done. He's run his zip system sheeting on this common wall between the house and the garage. And then he's also run it all the way to the ceiling line. Now what's above us here, Luke? Is there a house above us here? This is a second floor patio deck. So we had right, to so slope the ceiling. So if you see those sister two by twelves, one's for the flat ceiling for the garage, the other one's a sloped floor yeah. for the patio. So it's above. a flat roof basically Correct. with a deck above. And then how did you get your framer to do that deal, Tail? That looks good, man. A lot of tacos. <laughs> um, <short laughs> nice answer. work. No, I would have liked to run a ledger, I run the zip first, and then run a ledger, and then hanger these in here. But uh -huh. the engineer didn't like it. So we had to really cut and caulk all those little bitty pieces in there to get that air seal as, as good as we could. Yeah, um, you're not quite perfect because you've got sister joists, right? right? There could be a little leakage in, in there. In between but it's, those two, right. But it's way better than what we normally yeah, see. If I had to do it again with this detail, I would run a bead of caulk along one of those and before then. I sandwiched it to the other one in that same plane as the wall. Smart. So Matt, this, this is your exterior wall. Yeah. A lot of people don't think that, but yeah, the exterior wall was on the other side of that guy. That's and right. I need to treat this coming right on through because this is outside and then it's got a bunch of bad stuff you mentioned in that air. Yeah, we don't want that air in. Let's go inside. I'll meet you in there. Oh, wait. Hey, Matt. What? Oh, well, forget him. He's off. Uh, one more thing I wanted to point out about the garage is that, you know, we've, we're going to park a hot car in here that's off gassing all the nasty stuff out of the exhaust. We've got gas cans, we've got lawnmower equipment, we've got paint cans. We don't want any of that stuff in our home. So not only are we gonna air seal, but an extra measure we do is install this motion sensored exhaust fan. So on motion, either when the garage door opens up or you walk out here, it's okay if it goes more than what you want it to, but we can program it to go on for like say 10 minutes at 60 CFM, you know, every time we trip it on motion. So. One extra step, we want to get all that nasty stuff out of here. It's going to help with the indoor air quality. Let me catch you back up with Matt. Oh, Luke, I like seeing those two by 12s all the way up where your handrails are going to go. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, my trim carpenters aren't going to have to guess where those are. Yeah, he likes coming to your job, yeah. I bet. <laughs> now, what's up with the painted framing in here? It looks like someone came in and a whitewash bomb exploded in this house. Pretty much. So you mentioned earlier my client had some chemical sensitivity concerns. Mm -hmm. So she hired an outside consultant. And one of those recommendations that came from him was essentially putting a kale and clay coating over all the framing. A kale and clay coating? Kaolin. Kale like the salad? Not like the salad. Kale and uh, it's kaolin a type of clay. clay. Correct. And it comes in a fine powder and you mix it with water to get the right viscosity and then you mix it with a binding agent. And in this case we used uh, Roma Bio Paint, which is a mineral based paint, zero VOC. Ah. And so that's what allows it to stick onto the wall. So and what's the benefit of doing that at this framing stage? Yeah, so again, we want to, uh, we wanted to coat all the framing in case there was any existing mold spores, which obviously there are. Mm -hmm. Mold spores Always. are everywhere. They're everywhere. Um, and the clay acts as a natural mold inhibitor and in, in fungicide. Oh, so it's kind of a, a, uh, a natural antimicrobial, right? Correct. Instead of spraying some of the other stuff that's uh, maybe has some chemicals in it to prevent that in the future. Right. Um, this one is going to be a more natural base. Correct. Any Correct. other benefits to the clay be beyond that? Uh, to use your quote, the hydric buffer capacity. Oh, there we go. Now I, got him, now I got him interested. <laughs> um, the clay is going to act kind of as an absorbent. So in case that wall cavity does get a little wet mm -hmm. with a future water leak or, or whatever, it's going to help absorb that moisture and hold it and then release it over a, a long amount of time. Got it. Very cool. Now I'm seeing metal cables mm -hmm. and some black mm -hmm. paint. I don't normally see that in a residential This one was job. the first one for me. So the client also had a couple of RMF concerns. Okay. And so she uh, talked with a consultant and this is what they recommended. So, so we electromagnetic fields, right? Correct. They're worried about those from the wires in the house. In order to mitigate that, the consultant recommended this armored shielded Romex. It's okay. very common in commercial industries, but essentially it's a metal coating uh, coil that all the Romex goes through. Gotcha. And then on top of that, you'll see the black paint. That's a paint uh, combined with graphite and cobalt. And that also does some things to help shield the magnetic frequencies coming out of our 110 power in our homes. Okay, interesting. Now on the theme of foam free, your stud mm -hmm. bays are empty now, but I am noticing that you've got zip R sheathing in the wall. Yeah, I love that thermal bridge gap there. Yeah. Um, so 
uh, if we can wrap our homes in a sweater instead mm -hmm. of stuffing that in our ribs, we're always off to a good start, Great right? Great Steber quote right so, there. So um, yep. essentially we doubled, or we increased by 50% the R value of this section of the wall. Wow, that's awesome. So it awesome. went from an R5 to an R8, 8.3. Yep. yep, so no T studs on this house, right? Mm -hmm, right. Um, okay, so then you've got zip R sheathing, but what, what did the consultant say about this? Because this is obviously foam, this is polyiso foam. Right, so we tried to eliminate all plywood, all glue from this house as we could. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to, I was like, guys, this, this thermal bridging is a big deal. It's going to uh -huh. pay off for the life of the home, and you only get one chance to do it. So because we're ventilating our stucco, um, the consultant was okay using this. And because it's mixed in a factory with a lot safer controls, okay. he, was, he was comfortable with the fact that this is already off gas. It's okay to put it in a home. Okay, so then on that same point, though, we do have a little bit of canned foam in here, right? This Correct. orange fire uh, foam. What was the consultant's call on the on that? Yeah, so we we could have used fire caulk in these locations, but we had to meet code, right? We mm -hmm. can't we can't get a CO on this home unless we make the inspectors happy. So yep. there's some some give and pull, give and take, push and pull with that. Um, but because this was a can foam, a one part foam, uh, he was okay with the fact that it's going to cure and it's not going to you know some guy's not going to mix it wrong in a trailer right. and then it's going to off gas for the next two decades. Yeah, in effect, yeah. the spray foam guys end up being semi chemists because they're mixing part A, part B. Conditions need to, to be correct. The 50-50 mix needs to be right. All those things. Mm -hmm. So he said, let's eliminate all those variables. Knowing right. zip R is made in a factory, that's single component. Okay, so you've got empty wall bays, mm -hmm. but I'm seeing insulation on your ceiling already, and Correct. this gets me excited. Tell yes. me about your ceiling. Well, this here. was a staging issue we had. So um, we had a we have a low slope roof, mm -hmm. and we wanted to spray all the framing with that kaolin clay. Ah. And so we're like, gosh, how are we going to stage this? So we framed it, we painted it, and then to help out our insulators, we got them in here first. Usually they're in here last, but yeah. we got them in here first so that they can't, they don't have to so work So no around. mechanicals in place. No mechanicals. No ducts. We didn't want them ripping out all of our duct work and our wiring. So they were in here first. They've got it netted good enough to where they're going to come back in here in a few weeks, finish the whole house, do the touch-ups on the ceiling where it's fallen down or where we had to run a plumbing pipe up through the vent. Yep. We'll patch those, get the netting back nice and tight. So now mm -hmm. you've got a conditioned attic. All of your mm -hmm. ducts are inside the thermal envelope. And what's your insulation up there? So this is now an R, gosh, what is that? R43? Of, so uh, there's two bats of Rockwell of up Rockwell there. Of up there. Those are two by 12s we have. Yeah, so Rockwell is a great choice mm -hmm. for indoor air quality. We've got no off-gassing. Uh, it's made from rocks, which is a natural mm -hmm. material, so you're in good shape. And because we're doing our air sealing on the outside, so that same Zip 2.0 detail I did with the, the roof decking as well. Gotcha. So let's talk decking then. This decking on the floor does not look like anything I've ever seen before. What are we seeing here, Luke? Yeah, this is actually called mag Magnesium Oxide Board, or MGO for short. And this is the first time for me to use it, but this was also along the same thread of indoor air quality. So, gotcha. so that's what this is. Extreme huh? green, correct. Extreme green. Mm -hmm. So this is a, how thick is this? This is a three quarter inch material. Here's a sample of it. And how did they get strength out of that? It looks like glorified drywall to me. Yeah, so if you can look in here with it through the muddy boot prints and whatnot, you can <laughs> kind of see a grid pattern. And what that is, is a, a webbing of fiberglass mesh. So an, a net of fiberglass mesh on both sides, and then one is actually in the middle of this. So that's how they get their structural rating for it. Gotcha. So, and then how did you attach it? I'm seeing it looks like a nail pattern on here. Is there glue attached as well? There is. You know, I always prefer to use Advantech subflooring with mm -hmm. their foam glue. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a great choice on my but houses, But this, this was client-driven, and, and uh, they were really concerned about the glues and whatnot, so we, we try to eliminate as much plywood out of this home as possible. It feels pretty solid. There's it one is. or two spots that I might have noticed a little bit more it's, give. Uh, I always use an inch and an eighth Advantech. Yeah, me this too. feels more like a three-quarter inch plywood subfloor. Yeah, um, yeah. Or back in our production builder days, we used Correct. like three quarter OSB, OSB. or five eighths OSB, right. and you'd had a real spongy floor that yeah. was prone. So we're to, we're gluing a wood floor to this, so it's going to give it a little more rigidity. That's good. Uh, and then we also use a zero VOC glue to glue this down to the trusses. Now I noticed that you varied though on your on your stairs, right? I that did. was an MGO board. I didn't I didn't budge on that one. <laughs> I'm like stairs are important to me. We're doing LVL stringers. We're doing Advantech. Yeah, so it's Advantech on there. Absolutely. Uh, you just can't, you, the callback on that is way too, uh, uh, too prone otherwise. Correct. Now what's above us for roof deck then? So we use three quarter inch MGO on the subfloor and we use the five eighths MGO from Extreme Green on the roof deck. 
Interesting. And then how did you air seal that on top of that? The Zip 2.0. So we use a Zip liquid flash ah. and troweled in all the joints. Gotcha. And then a traditional tar paper or some other type of roof uh, underlay. Uh, on yeah, top an of ice that. and water peel and stick for the metal roof we're putting on top of this. Gotcha. Man, this is cool. Very interesting. And then the walls are getting what for insulation? So we're doing 100% rock wool. Okay. Yeah. So, so the took whole out house will have rock wool in it. Whole house rock wool. So sound walls, outside walls, roof deck. Um, we're putting a little bit in the in the truss space for sound dampening reasons downstairs. Interesting build, man. I'm impressed. Very, very cool. You guys are doing a great job over here. Any last comments on indoor air quality or any other tips or tricks? For someone doing this, would you do some of these methods again? Are you a believer after doing this? You, you obviously don't do this on every <laughs> build. Not on every. This is my first home to go so extreme. So yeah. you want to get your homes tight yep. so that you're not bringing in outdoor dust, right. outdoor pollen, outdoor humidity. Mm -hmm. So we're going to control it and ventilate it on our terms and not let the passive winds control our ventilation. Love right? it. Yes. And then once we got that nailed, we're going to make sure that we have a good filter in the HVAC systems. Mm -hmm. So in this one, we're actually upgraded that a little bit to a carbon a carbon impregnated media filter. Okay, so we've got great filtration great in the filtration. house. And then there's probably some uh, fresh air system. That's to right, we have well. right above you, right over here, we have our ultra air ventilated dehumidifier. Ah, that is yes. something I do on every one of my homes. Yeah, so you've got a little 98H there that's gonna Correct. bring in fresh air with a timer system, drop the pollen out, nice big filter, drop the humidity out so we can keep the humidity low. Man, this is an impressive build, dude. Very good stuff. A lot to learn from this job. Guys, if you don't know Luke, follow him on Instagram and stay tuned in our channel because Luke and I are shooting another video later today uh, about his stucco install and some best practices you can learn from what he's doing over here. Luke, thanks for touring me, man. Impressive build. Cool. You guys do a thanks, great man. job. Appreciate it. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button if you're not a current subscriber. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on The Build Show.